In India, the practice of witch hunting continues to blight some regions. It's mostly women who are labelled as witches and left isolated or facing violence at the hands of their communities. There are laws to stop it, but as DW correspondent Manira Chaudhary reports, instances still occur regularly. Shimoti frequently visits this tree with her son to offer prayers. The tribe she belongs to considers the tree their temple. But Shrimoti fears that someday she'd be barred from offering prayers here. A woman in her village recently passed away due to illness and the villagers blamed Shrimoti for the death. She was labelled a witch. The villagers dragged her to an ojha or a traditional healer. He backed their accusation and even suggested that boiling oil be poured over Shrimoti to exorcise her. Her son, Bothel, has gone to court seeking protection for his mother under the provisions of the state's anti-witch hunting law. I don't understand why this happened to me. It was frightening when they made these allegations. My entire family and I live in fear of what the villagers might do to us. Witch hunting is common in Jharkhand, one of the poorest states in India, where ethnic tribal groups form roughly a quarter of the population. And it is mostly in these communities that this practice exists. Witch hunting is a centuries-old social evil which has its roots in superstition. But now, it seems to have become a convenient way to silent, oppress and ostracize vulnerable women. Salkan Murmu is a social activist and former member of parliament. He has been helping Srimoti and Bothel with their legal case. He runs an organization for tribal empowerment, which has been raising awareness against witch hunting and helping those victimized by it. The intent behind this practice is mostly to scare vulnerable women, mostly those who are old and aged for an ulterior motive, or to gang up against them and snatch their land. Sometimes tribal chiefs also make these allegations just to ensure their domination in the village. Murmu says that while there are anti-witch hunt laws, they are not effective and those accused often face grave danger. In a village on the other side of the state, Ratan Hasta and his wife Champa face similar charges. They were accused of witchcraft after their own daughter died of illness. It is one of the few cases in India where a man has also been accused of being a witch. We were falsely accused by our relatives because of land and property disputes. All of the villagers turned against us and we had to flee the village to save our lives. Like Srimoti, Ratan and Champa also live in constant fear of attack. Jharkhand state laws have done little to protect them. Until India's government passes national legislation against witch hunting, they, like so many others, will continue to be victimized by this age-old and brutal practice. And joining me now for more context is Ms. Charu Vali Khanna. She's a leading women's rights lawyer and former member of the National Commission for Women. Ms. Khanna, why does the practice of witch hunting continue in India? Before answering the question why, I'd like to tell you who are the targets. You see, the women who are targeted are widows, elderly women or single women. And according to an NCW study, 32% of the women who were targeted belong to the Dalit community. And this community is a community which was uh, considered untouchable for centuries. They are socially, economically, educationally excluded and deprived. So what are the reasons? The reasons are property disputes, unknown diseases, mostly economic causes. I'm not saying superstition. This uh, dis discussion has been initiated due to the incident in Jharkhand. In Jharkhand and Bihar, it's primarily due, due to agricultural land struggles between the tribal widow and a family. You know, they're very small shareholdings. So once the husband dies, there is a attempt from the uh, other members of related by the family to usurp her property and to throw her out. And this is also linked to, I would say it's centrally linked to issues of governance and development because the data collected shows that places, areas where there's acute neglect, dismal administration, 
poor health care, sanitation and education, these tragedies right. happen. Are there no laws to prevent this? There are some laws, like as if uh, I just like to inform you that in India, police and public order, according to section the seventh schedule of the Constitution of India, fall under the purview of states. So there is no uh, central legislation at the present. There is a bill which has been introduced, but there are uh, state legislations. And Bihar was the first state in India to introduce it in 1999. And after that, then the Jharkhand uh, Prevention of Witch Hunting, what they call Dayan. The, mm -hmm. You know, the local word used is Dayan, Dakayan, Dan. So these are the words they use. So in 2001, Chhattisgarh also has enacted a law in 2006, Odisha 2013, Rajasthan. 2015, Assam has, uh, in Assam's law is the strictest, and uh, it's uh, in 2015 they uh, enacted the legislation with making the uh, offence non bailable non compoundable What needs to happen to end this practice, despite the existence of these laws? See, uh, I told you that it's the areas where it's happening is there's the abject poverty. There's a uh, resources are limited. Education is dismal, economic development is dismal, and there's a lot of impoverishment. So what is happening is that illness, when there's an illness or a death or a tragedy, in areas where education, health, and sanitation is lacking, they right. tend to rationalize it through which blaming. And what mm -hmm. happens is that when there's a woman, if you see it's not an individual who's doing it, it's always a group. So the family members who are the instigators, they are the ones who want to usurp the woman's property or want her to subject her to some kind of, you know, uh, sexual uh, uh, subjugation. So what right. they do is that they create a rumor and they utilize the youth. A lot of youth in that area, when we're talking about these uh, absolutely impoverished areas, the youth are, uh, they're all just hanging around. Their purpose, right. uh, they are not employed, they're not going to school, so, and then the rumor is spread and they are incited to indulge in this violence. So, because the woman is forcibly pulled out of the house, and then right. she is shamed, humiliated, tonsured, teeth broken, and all publicly. So, there have been many efforts, I mean, apart from the law, there have been many efforts to, uh, you know, kind of uh, stop this practice. Right. We'll have to leave it there for the time being. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Ms. Charu Wali Khanna. Thank you so much.